This is Algebra 2, Lesson 45. We are on page 200. Wait, okay, we're just gonna let that sink in a minute. 200. I love, I know. It's amazing, isn't it? 200 pages of math. It's amazing. What? Minus the few we skip. Yes, thank you, Mackenzie. Okay, so far, ladies and gentlemen, we have factored a binomial that is perfect, that are, when the terms are perfect squares and the terms are subtracted, right? Typically, we can, we, we can always factor these. What are the factors of this binomial? Someone. Go ahead, Sarah. Yes. And our solutions are, Nora, x equals plus and minus nine. So we have conjugate factors and we have conjugate solutions. What is different in this lesson is we are going to have terms squared. <clears throat> we are gonna have terms squared. However, all terms are not going to be perfect squares, such as if I made this seven. They're not perfect squares, right? So the way that we solve an equation when I have a term squared and a term that is not a perfect square is I move the x squared on one side, every other term on the other side. So I'm gonna add the seven to both sides, we have x squared is positive seven, and then we take the square root of both sides. x equals plus and minus the square root of seven. Why is it both plus and minus? Yes? That is exactly correct, because the square root of seven times the square root of seven is what? Seven. Negative square root of seven times negative square root of seven is what? Seven. seven. That is why it is both plus and minus. <clears throat> that term, that number. All right, so they're not always just going to have an X squared. There may be a binomial squared, but we're gonna treat it the same way as we do the X. So look at example one. It's X plus 17 squared equals two. Okay, here's what always, always has to be true. You have a term squared equals a positive number. Why can I not have x, a term squared equals a negative number? Because the square root of that would be negative? Right, because when I take the square root and just looking at the square root of negative two, can I multiply anything by itself to get to negative two? Mm -hmm. I need a positive and a negative number to get to negative two. All right, so always it has to be something squared equals a positive number. I'm gonna treat this the same way. We take the square root, notice the, the term squared is isolated on one side of the equal sign. Everything else is on the other side. I take the square root of both sides, always where the X is not, it's positive and negative. What is left on this side of the equal sign? What's the square root of something squared? It's just X plus 17. Do you understand that? So we're left with x plus 17 equals plus minus square root of two. Then you subtract 17 on both sides. The value of x is, and we must write this in proper order, 
x equals negative 17 plus minus square root of 2. Remember, it's real, well, it's rational, irrational, and then we're going to add complex later. All right, let's look at the only other example. This is so much like what we've already worked that they do not give us a lot of examples. So x plus 2 fifths squared equals 3. When you take the square root of both sides, on the right-hand side, you're just left with what's under the radical, and it equals plus minus the square root of 3. Subtracting your 2 fifths on both sides, x is negative 2 fifths plus minus the square root of 3. Make sense? Isolate the vine. Yes? I would leave it like this, yes. In the book, they have like two solutions. Right, so they put x equals negative 2 fifths plus square root of 3, and x equals negative 2 fifths minus square root of 3. So we don't need to do that? You do not have to do this. You can put plus and minus. Okay, leave it as plus and minus. I will say... Okay, here's one thing I want, I want us to notice. When we have something squared equals a number, all, always our solutions are conjugates, right? The only thing that changes is the middle term. Okay, so that is going to be true every time. You have something squared equals a number, your solutions will always be conjugate terms. And when you 